All right, let's take a look at study link 7.7, .7, fraction, name, collection, boxes. And here we were basically looking for equivalent fractions. So if we have here one half, what fractions are equal to one half? And I have a more detailed lesson about this, but a basic idea here is that one half times one is always going to equal one half. So if we multiply one half by one, it's still going to be equal to one half. And if I have a fraction like this, where I have four fourths or four quarters, that is equal to one. Everything filled in means one whole. So four fourths is equal to one, same as three thirds or six sixths. Is equal to 1. So if we're multiplying 1 half times 4 fourths, it's the same as multiplying by 1. And if you've never done this before, to multiply fractions, you just go straight across and then straight across. So 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. So 1 half is also equal to 4 eighths. And you can, again, replace this with anything like 8 eighths or 100, 100 ths, and you'll still have an equivalent fraction. So now, looking back here, we need to find out um, what is equal to 1 half, and they're giving us some of these numbers here. So we need to look at those and figure out the equivalent fraction. So let's do this. We've got <clears throat> 1 half is equal to something over 4 for our first one. So then the question is 1 half times what will give us this here and you probably know that 2 times 2 equals 4. So we must be having 1 half times 2 halves. And then the top part is going to be 2. And then we're all set over here. 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. Next we have a 5 as the numerator. So now we're going to have it looking like this. 1 half times what equals 5 something. So we can do the top part first. 1 times 5 equals 5. So if I put the 5 down there, then we've got the rest figured out. So 1 half is equal to 5 tenths, like that. And then for the other ones here, you just follow that same process. So. Two, 1 times what equals 10, fill in your fraction there and you can figure it out. 2 times what equals 18, and then fill in this and then you can figure out the top. And there's a pattern to figure out, but I think you'll get it eventually. And the other ones you can just do exactly the same. So now we're talking about 2 thirds equals something ninths. So I know 3 times 3 is 9, and now I can fill in the rest there. Same thing, now we have uh, 12. So what times 2 is going to give us 12? That would be 6, 6, and now I can fill in the bottom part. And the rest of these, I think, with 2 thirds and 1 fourth, you can finish on your own and then you can make up a couple of your own with blanks for somebody else to solve and then we need to finish it up with a little bit of division so let's take a quick look at this and we will do the partial quotients method or the big seven method uh, let's do the first one so I will make my big 7, and I'm going to think 4 times, um, I can go straight up to 80, 4 times 10, 
or 4 times 20 is going to give me 80. Then there's 15 left. If I do 4 times 4 more would be too many. How about 4 times 3 more would give me 12. So my answer is going to be 23. And now you could call this a remainder of 3. Or you could also do this other trick of turning it into a fraction by putting 3 over top of the number you divided by. So it's actually 23 and 3 fourths if you'd like to do it like that. <clears throat> Let's try one more like that. All right, if we did this one here, um, I'm going to do times 10 first, which gives me this. And I've realized I can do a lot more than 10. So why don't I do 30 next, um, which is going to give me that much. And you know, it looks like I'm not going to have a remainder because I know if I double that, there's no remainder. So the answer is just 10 plus 30 plus 2, which is 42. So I am all set for that. And this other one, I think you're not going to have a remainder for this one either, which is okay. All right, that's it for this home link. Thank you for watching. Bye.